In this video, we get to discuss the vertical motion of a body when it is falling through a viscous fluid. Right there, we have a diagram that is describing a solid sphere. This solid sphere is falling through what we call a viscous fluid. This viscous fluid could be porridge, it could be glue, it could be engine oil. Those fluids that are thick, those are the viscous fluids, the ones that are hard to penetrate because of their viscosity and thickness. So now this body, when it is falling through the viscous fluid, there are some forces that are acting on this sphere. These forces are the upthrust force that is derived from Archimedes principle. We also have this force capital F called the viscous drag, the one that we discussed in our previous session where we had the basis for Stokes law. And uh, then also we have the force that is making this fall down in the liquid. And that force is what we are calling the weight of this sphere. The weight that is propelling this sphere to fall through this viscous fluid. So we have these three forces. We have this force down and these two forces up. Now, we assume that this, this sphere is falling through this uh, let's call let's assume this thing is very tall and it's falling through a very tall jar that is full of engine oil for example so at the beginning this weight is bigger or it is it is bigger than these two forces combined in other words the downward forces are bigger than the upward forces and because the downward force is bigger than the upward force therefore there is an acceleration as this sphere is dropping down the fluid but after some time it's going to happen in such a way that as this thing goes down the downward forces are going to be equal to the upward forces that happens because as this sphere continues to go down the viscous drag keeps increasing remember according to stokes law that as the velocity of this thing keeps increasing because it is the velocity keeps increasing so as the velocity keeps increasing the viscous drugs also keeps increasing because if the viscous drug f and the velocity those two are directly proportional according to stock we covered that in the previous session so as that continues this ball continues to fall through this viscous drug the downward forces eventually equalize with the upward forces and now when the downward forces equate or are now equal to the upward forces you realize that now this body or this sphere stops accelerating and so it starts moving at a certain constant velocity now when it starts moving at a constant velocity because now there is no more acceleration the resultant force on this thing is, is now zero since the upward forces are now equal to the downward forces that velocity it will have attained is what we call the terminal velocity so if i may define what terminal velocity is we can say that terminal velocity is the maximum constant velocity that is attained by a body when it is falling through a viscous fluid let's look at this in terms of a graph what i'm trying to say is this that at the beginning the weight of this ball is bigger than the upward forces the downward forces are bigger than the upward forces and as a result there will be some level of acceleration as a result of the resultant force but it's going to reach a point whereby the f the resultant force on this body is zero and so it means that this body will start moving through this viscous fluid at a constant velocity now when it starts moving at a constant velocity that constant velocity velocity it's moving at is what we are calling terminal velocity and by definition terminal velo velocity is the maximum constant velocity that is attained by body when it is falling through a viscous fluid so let's take a look at this we have this solid sphere right here it is falling through this viscous drug this fluid the viscous fluid and we are saying that when terminal velocity is achieved the weight which is this acting downwards the downward forces are equal to the upward forces which so happens to be the upthrust and the viscous drag when these two are the same it means that um, we are this body is falling through this liquid at terminal velocity and now we want to use this to find the expression for terminal velocity so what we are going to do one 
We are going to first find the expression for weight, the weight of uh, this ball. So it means, of course, we know that weight is going to be equal to mass times gravity. So we need to find the mass of this ball and the, and the acceleration due to gravity. Then we also need to find the up thrust that is experienced by this ball. The up thrust experienced by this ball, we get that from Archimedes principle, which states that uh, a body that is wholly or partially immersed in a fluid is going to experience an up thrust, which is equivalent to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. So it means for us to get the up thrust here, we simply need to find the weight of the fluid that has been displaced. And of course, finding the weight of the fluid that has been displaced requires that we know volume of this sphere and the density of this sphere. Then we also have what we call the viscous drag. Of course, now the viscous drag, capital F, we get that by, uh, by, by, by quoting Stokes' formula. Uh, Stokes' formula has got velocity in it, and the velocity in it there is going to be the terminal velocity. So now let's get to it. We need to find the expressions for this. We want to come up with an expression for terminal velocity. Of this body that is falling through this viscous fluid. So let's get started with the viscous drag F. Now for us to be able to get the viscous drag, the viscous drag at terminal velocity is given by 6 pi times the coefficient of viscosity times the radius times the velocity. Now the velocity in this case we have denoted it as V subscript T and V subscript T stands for the terminal velocity because the ball is falling at terminal velocity. So that is the viscous drag, this is the expression. And now, of course, the other thing that we need to know is that the density of the sphere is denoted by rho. The density of the fluid, we shall denote it by that. Then the terminal velocity is V subscript T, which we are using here in this expression. Then the coefficient of viscosity is denoted by that expression. Then the radius of the sphere, we shall be using R. These are the symbols we shall be using in this so for viscous drag f is given by 6 pi times coefficient of viscosity times the radius of the ball times the the terminal velocity so we have this expression for this now let's go on to the expression for the up thrust again from archimedes principle we know that up thrust is equivalent to the weight of the fluid that has been displaced and the weight of that fluid that has been displaced is given by mass times gravity now, of course, gravity is a constant remain, but now we do not know the mass of the fluid. So mass of the fluid can still be given by density times volume. That is coming from this. Now, the density of the fluid, we already got that as from our earlier expressions. We said that density of the fluid is given by that. So density of the fluid is that. Multiply that by the volume uh, of the fluid, which is V. Multiply that by gravity. Now, the volume of the fluid that has been displaced is equivalent to the volume of the sphere because it is the sphere that is displacing. So, the sphere can only displace its own volume. So, the, the volume of the, of, 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 the, of, the, of the liquid that has been displaced or the volume of the fluid that has been displaced, this V is equivalent to the volume of the sphere. Multiply that by gravity, which is G. So, the volume of the sphere is what is here as 4 over 3 pi r cubed. This is the volume of a perfect sphere. Multiply that by gravity, then the density of the fluid, and then we come up with that expression. And that expression we've come up with is simply the expression for the up thrust right there. So this is the expression we come up with for up thrust. So now that we've got the expression for up thrust, let's go ahead and find the expression for the weight of the sphere that is falling through. So how is that given? The weight of the sphere is given by mass times gravity, of course. So gravity remains. Then for mass can be given by density times volume. Now the density, we have that. Now according to our writer, we say that density of the sphere is given by that, so this is the density of the sphere, so that's density of the sphere. Multiply that by the volume of the sphere, which is given by 4 over 3 pi r cubed. This is the formula for volume of a sphere. Multiply that by gravity, and so the weight, which so happens to be mass times gravity, ends up being this. So this is the expression for weight. So we have been, we have gotten our weight. So we have the expression for this, we have the expression for up thrust, we have the expression for the viscous drag. So we are going to go ahead and these expressions we've got, we're going to go ahead and substitute them in this expression so that we're able to get an expression for terminal velocity. And this is exactly what we've done here. The weight of the, dra of, of, of the ball 
this is the weight of the ball we got it from here weight is that substituting there then it's going to give us the up thrust experienced by the sphere or the ball as it falls through the viscous drag which is this and that was got from here then we have the viscous drag which viscous drag we obtained from this expression right here like we had explained earlier so now we go ahead and find the expression for this terminal velocity vt so making this the subject of the formula of course this whole expression will come that way and this remains this way alone let me let me start with this so it's going to become 6 pi uh, times coefficient of viscosity times r times the terminal velocity is going to be given by uh, this minus that so it's going to become 4 over 3 pi r cubed times coefficient of viscosity times gravity minus this which is 4 over 3 pi r cubed density of fluid times gravity so now you realize that this and that this is the same so we factorize out some stuff so this is becomes 4 over 3 that is going to become pi r cubed r cubed times gravity gravity so gravity into this is the density uh, the density of the sphere minus density of the fluid that is going to be given by 6 pi So going ahead to make VT the subject of the formula in this case is going to become uh, terminal velocity is going to give us 4 pi r3 g into uh, density of the sphere minus density of the fluid divide this is 4 over 3 divide that by 6 pi times coefficient of viscosity times r now this pi and that pi will cancel out and of course you remain with your terminal velocity the expression when you divide 4 over 3 divide that by 6 this is going to give us 2 over 9 uh, this is r of course this an r here it disappears this is r cubed so it disappears this 3 remains 2 so this becomes r squared times g uh, like that into So this is our expression for terminal velocity Now that is we can use this to find terminal velocity of a sphere that is falling, falling through a viscous fluid or You can if you want to find the coefficient of viscosity of the fluid Where a sphere is falling through you simply the, the, these two can flip sides So it means that this expression can also still be written as this comes here this is uh that is going to give be given by 2 r squared g divide that by 9 times terminal velocity into the density of the sphere minus the density of the fluid This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Amal Brangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.